Hi everyone. So a couple of things. This video tutorial is going to be about how to apply makeup in Photoshop and I'm going to show you how to start from absolutely nothing. So this particular image has zero makeup on and I will show you how to make it look realistic. Also, I'll do a little bit of a more kind of high contrast fantasy edit to this image and um, you'll see that the results are just amazing. This is super easy to do. You just need a basic knowledge of Photoshop and the tools that are within it and um, I hope you enjoy this. Um, another little bit of news is that I'm filming this in November 2021 and I will be planning a workshop finally <laughs> Um, in March of 2022 and now it will be in Virginia. I'm not sure exactly where yet um, If you are a member of my Facebook group, I do have a post there and everyone interested I'll put you on a list. I try to keep these small somewhere between 10 and 15 people max just because I like to do one-on-one -on -one personal educating for each person that comes along. I haven't thought of the theme yet, but if you have any ideas on what you would like to learn, you can post it in the description below and we will be coming up with the whole entire idea and the theme because I'd really like to do a theme when I teach workshops and we will take it from there. So stay tuned for that and now on to the video. Okay, so this is the image that I was referring to, and like I said, absolutely no makeup on this lovely young lady. So, right now it's opened up as a smart object, but I do not need to make any other changes to it, so I'm going to go ahead and just flatten this layer. So, the first thing that I'll do is a little bit of cleanup, and I'll do the basic skin retouching, and then I'll show you how to put the makeup on. So duplicate my layer. I'm just going to speed this up because I'm just going to do cleanup and then I'll go into frequency separation and take it from there. Okay, now we're going to go into liquify and just do some basic shaping. Okay, basic retouching, cleaning up. That looks a little bit better. Good enough base. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten it now. Now I'm just going to duplicate my layer, come down to my retouch set, and start frequency separation. I always just leave the Gaussian blur at the default, go to my low layer, grab my mixer brush, and my settings are all basically the same as always. Wet is about 50, load is about 50, and flow is about 24, 25. And just zoom in and doing little tiny circles. I zoom in and then I always zoom out because it helps to zoom out so you can really see what you're doing. But I love this action because it just maintains the texture and it allows you to not, not only just maintain the texture, but move different colors and tones throughout the image to make it a little bit more cohesive. So always little circles. And I do love it for 
things like these flyaway hairs we can really soften this area and make it look like it blends in a bit so you saw when I used the patch tool for the hair around here we got some ghosting and stuff like that but usually if you use the mixer brush you can just come in in your frequency separation action and just easily get rid of you know the bl glaringly obvious flaws Okay, so let's just look at the before and the after. That's before and that's after. And again, this is more gonna be more of a fantasy edit, so um, you could reduce the overall opacity of the entire group if you wanted to bring back a little bit more of the natural detail. I usually reduce it to about 75 or so. And then there's the before and the after. So it cleans it up nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten and I'll just show you a little tip. So I'm duplicating my layer. I'm still on my mixer brush, the same settings. But if you zoom in, you can see the wig, right? So this is the lace front. So using the mixer brush, you can come in and kind of just blend it more in. Don't go too heavy handed on this because you want it to look realistic. What I'm trying to do is I just want to blend in that obvious wig lace front portion of this. So I'm going to pull some of the white from the hair over to blend it. And again, guys, if you are not familiar with the mixer brush, it is definitely a tool you need to get to know. And I do have a course up in my teachable school if you're interested. But it's super helpful to blend things, especially, you know, things like this, but also composites. It really helps with edge work and just blending. If you make your brush really small, you can create what appears to be brush strokes, like hair. Okay come over to the side here you could come in and very gently smooth these hairs into the skin a bit we're just trying to avoid it looking too blurry so if you go pretty lightly over these areas you can just kind of soften them so they don't look so noticeable Okay, so that's a good start. Let's just blend it in a little bit. I, once again, you could either use a regular white brush 
and add some hair strokes in like this. A lot of times just a, a regular brush will work as well, but that's, that's a good start. Okay, so we're gonna start the makeup transformation probably just with the eyebrows, okay? So a new blank layer. We're just gonna come in with a regular brush and just a regular soft brush. And all we're gonna do is reduce our flow to about eight or nine, sample the lighter color, and we're gonna come in and just shape her brows. So they're just a little messy. So we're just going to add a little bit of the hair here that she probably plucked away like a lot of women do. So what we're trying to do is just grab a darker base. So whenever you're creating either hair or eyebrows, you always need to start with the darker tone and that starts out as your base. So I'm just extending it to the bridge. So where hair is supposed to be is if you hold a pen to the side of your nose on each side, that's where your brow is supposed to be, right? So if she wouldn't have plucked, her natural brow would have gone this far. So for some reason, as women start grooming their eyebrows when they're young, they want to get rid of that unibrow, right? Which is totally normal. Um, but the problem is, is that as, you know, the years go by, women tend to pluck further and further apart until they end up with, you know, little U's, I call them, instead of eyebrows. So when you're fixing somebody's eyebrows, just keep that in mind. Um, Obviously, for a, more of a fantasy edit, you can do whatever the heck you want, but if you're doing corporate headshots or whatever, I would really err on the side of super conservative just because they still need to look like themselves. But not for this one. This one, we can do whatever the heck we want. Okay, so this is my dark base, and I'm trying to keep it pretty realistic by you know, there's two different kind of um, tones to each eyebrow based on the light. Okay, so this is the first base layer. And when I do this, I always work in layers because each one has its own, um, each one has to be on a separate layer so you can adjust them accordingly. So. The wig is white, so the base is darker, but what we're going to do is we're going to just right click and choose one of my hair brushes. You can find those in my store if you're interested. And I'm just going to start with a medium tone and I'm going to bump up my flow and I'm just going to start applying hair strokes. So you can see that this is significantly lighter than the base layer. And all we're doing is painting in additional hair strokes. I'm going to pull up my flow a bit more. So trying to follow the direction that hair grows. Okay. And it works well because it's like the light is hitting the actual hair strokes. Okay, new layer. And now we're gonna go about 50% of that. So I'm gonna reduce the size of my brush just a bit more. And we're gonna just start applying those highlight hairs.
Okay, let's zoom out. So the the fact that we've done this in layers, it really helps us now adjust it so that it looks more realistic. So I'm going to start with the base darker layer and just lighten that a little bit until it looks better. So I'm going to say right about 61 is good. This is the next one here. This was the mid-tone one, which I think still works. I'm going to try reducing the base layer just a little bit more right about there. Okay, now you have two options. You could do some dodging and burning, or you could just do another layer and go really, really light up to about here. I'm just going to change my brush to this smaller little one and put my flow all the way up to 100 and just add in some subtle, more highlight hair strokes. Okay. All right, so we'll reduce that one down a smidge and this other one down a little bit and the first hair stroke one that we did something like that I can see right now that I need to add a little bit more in here because I zoomed out so I'm just gonna add a couple strokes in here zoom out okay so now we have the eyebrows they look fairly realistic I'm just going to put them all in a group and now if I want to I can reduce the entire group. So right about there looks good. We're just going to call this eyebrows and let's look at the before and the after. That's before and that's after. So now we've got some pretty realistic looking eyebrows. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to add a blank layer overlay blend mode um, yeah somewhere in here for a bluish white color grab my soft brush and all we're gonna do is paint in the iris here and this is just gonna help the eye pop we don't really want vampire eyes I mean with this one we could but we don't really want too much of a vampire. Now I'm going to go to pure white. And again, all I have here is just my um, overlay blend mode. Let's undo that for a second. New layer. Always work on separate layers whenever you can. It just makes the whole process a little bit, little bit easier. So now I'm just painting that overlay blend mode onto the eyebrow. Just getting a little bit of light on it like so. I could even put a little bit on this jewel and this one here too. Okay, so let's look at the before and the after. So now we've added that. Zoom out and you can determine if you need to reduce it, which I do, which is why it's good to work on layers. Okay, so right about there's good. Perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to really focus on dodging and burning and this is prior to us doing any um, makeup yet so we've got the eyebrows in another group which is here it's fantastic I'm gonna go ahead and save this all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and put all of those into a group again and just call it firsts okay so the next thing that we're gonna do is we are are going to go into our hue saturation and I'm going to go to my yellows and I just want to reduce those yellows even more. I'm trying to make her really look more elfin so I want most of the yellows gone. So we can see that there's not a lot of yellow in this image which is good because I really didn't want any and that looks good. We could reduce the reds a little bit. She has a bit of a red nose so if you pull it to the right it will add a little bit of green and then you can reduce 
the saturation a bit. So right about there, I think it looks really good. So that's the before and the after. So now we've just tweaked the color a little bit, which is perfect. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I'm just gonna stamp this and duplicate that layer. And now I'm gonna come into my Lumenzia and hold down my shift and click the curves, curves for all wide zones and blend if. I find that I'm using this as a dodge and burn global effect more often than not these days because it's just so freaking easy. So double click on the first one, which is the, the brightest brights, but I'm looking at her skin only. So all I'm doing is pulling this up. I want the highlights in her skin to come up. Looks good there. And now what I'm gonna do is hold down my Alter Option key, click Mask, and all I'm gonna do is just paint that where I want it. Like I didn't want the highlights on her hair to be too blown out. So I'm just coming in and painting that on her face where I want the highlights to appear. Okay, all right, so the next one will be another lighter one. We're just gonna pull this up a tiny bit because it's pretty strong. Do the same thing. So now I'm just adding in a little bit more light. And this really helps with your dodging and burning. I find that it saves a lot, a lot of time. So, so far, just look at the difference. It's pretty, pretty amazing, isn't it? Okay, so now we're gonna focus on the shadows. I'm gonna go second from the bottom and just pull it down. Right about there looks good. And the same thing, just gonna go ahead and brush that on where I want it to be. So around the perimeter where the shadows already exist. like so. Okay, before and after, it's very subtle. And the last one, we'll try a little bit of darker just to see how it looks. Okay, I'm probably gonna go ahead and crop this image now. Let's just go ahead and go before and after. Do you see how amazing that dodged and burned this without me actually doing it? amazing right right just gonna merge these layers so now I'm left with just this one but first I'm gonna come in and just crop this to about here We don't need all that other stuff. This will be fine. Okay, so that looks good. Not too shabby. All right. I think I just noticed some more, some more little things I need to just quickly retouch. All righty. Okay. So now we're gonna focus on the eye makeup. So a new blank layer, we're gonna change our blend mode to overlay. Soft white brush, which we have. <clears throat> and so for this makeup, I want her to appear to be more elfin. So I'm not gonna go for it like glamour makeup or anything, this will be more of a fantasy. So I'm gonna sample the color of the hair and I'm just gonna come in and start making her eyelids lighter. And you can see I'm working at 100% flow and opacity with this. And her waterline as well. So I can also see that her eyelids look kind of pink. So if I go into more of a blue 
it should add a little bit of blue in just to reduce that red a smidge okay so also new layer overlay blend mode we're going to come into the blue more in the saturated mid-tone area and we're going to focus on the darker crease in her eye just like this just a little bit of blue not too terribly much and I do want to come into more of a gold now and bring that in here it's actually too yellow let's go more orange and more like this Let's go more pink. Let's really reduce the flow now down to about eight and let's really go subtle with the color. I'm going to go to more of a neutral gray and that'll help tone down some of the other colors that I did. Now let's go back to white and just come over like so. Okay, so this is all that we've done. Now we can reduce. It's a little heavy. Something like that looks fairly good. This one here, we're just going to reduce this one as well to about here. Okay, so don't don't be afraid to adjust that. Um, the opacity will really, really help you when you're trying to do this. I'm going to go ahead and just blend those all together. New blank layer. This time I'm going to use a soft light and again sample the hair I'm just gonna highlight that brow bone a little bit it's pretty subtle it's on yeah soft light so that's good I do love the color of her eyes so I'm probably gonna just extend that down so just focus on using colors that already exist in your image because it'll look a lot more cohesive. Something like that. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Um, I do think that her lips need a little bit of work too, but we'll finish the eyes first. Okay, new blank layer. We're gonna go to a multiply blend mode. And I'm actually, going to just use a deep almost purpley color now keep in mind we're on multiply so it's darkening and we're just going to really focus on deepening the shadows around the corners so oh so subtle Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to go pretty dark and I'm going to really focus on the line of her eye. Just deepening the shadows, which will give it a little bit more dimension. And a little bit in the crease here.
Okay. Let's just zoom out so you can see. That's the heavier makeup and that's the lighter one there. Once again, we're just going to go ahead and merge those and now you can see the before and the after. And that's including all of the dodging and burning that we did before, right? And that looks pretty good. So the next thing that I would do for her eyes is add some eyelashes. So because her hair is white, I think I'm actually going to use this color. And we're going to pull our flow all the way up. And like I said, this is a fantasy edit, so I'll use my, my hairbrush, which actually works really well for this. And we'll just see. So we're just going to add some white lashes. And now I'm going to go pure white and just add some accent lashes. Okay, zoom out and you can reduce something like that. So that's before and that's after. Now, if you don't like that, feel free to reduce it down and then you could underneath that just do black. It sometimes helps with the popping. So this layer is underneath the top white lash layer. Okay, and then play with your opacity on the white layer because it might look better if it's a little bit brighter. Okay, so that's with the dark underneath. You can reduce that one down a little bit if it's too heavy. But I think all in all that looks that looks pretty good and that little cheek is still bugging me right there. Okay, so that's looking pretty sweet. So I'm just going to merge those again together. And um, I really want to, I'm so used to flattening as I go. So I think I might go ahead and just flatten because it's easier for me. I'm just going to flatten. I can still show you the before and after afterwards. Okay, I'm going to open my dodge and burn layer and just reduce my flow down to 100 and get a soft brush. And I'm just going to get rid of that dark spot. Sometimes that's the easiest way to get rid of shadows and stuff. So zoom out so I can still see it right about here. And that's a bit better. I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting on her lip here. And now we get more into the focused dodging and burning. That global one initially was definitely useful in getting us going. But now we have to get into the details. So the key to dodging and burning, as always, is to focus on the area you want to bring forward for dodging, and burning is the area you want to appear to be deeper or more set back. So I'm bringing out her brow bones here, just a bit more. This light on the bridge of her nose is obviously going to be a little bit more bright than other parts of her face because it 
pushes forward. Same thing with her chin, so just a spot of light on her chin. Also on her forehead here, and a little bit more on the apples of her cheek. A little bit in the whites of her eyes, not too much, because if you do her, the whites of the eyes too much, it looks really weird. Okay, now we're going to grab our burn tool and we're just going to focus on deepening her cheekbones. And under her jaw, chin. And always around the hair. Okay, she's starting to look very elfin. So I want this rib cage to appear a little bit more deep set, so I darken it, right? Same thing here. Add a little bit of dimension to the hair by deepening it up just a bit. Okay, let's just look at the before and the after and now you can just reduce somewhere around right there. Looks good. Okay. So now what I want to do is really create um, some depth in the image. So all I'm going to do is duplicate my layer, hit multiply, reduce it to about here. And now I'm just going to add a mask and paint it off our subject. And this as well um, is another technique for, you know, even making your subject look a little bit more three dimensional is to deepen the entire image using a multiply blend mode or what have you, and then subtly painting it off your image so that it actually looks even more three dimensional. before and after. So that really added some drama. Feather that mask out before and after. I'm going to go ahead and flatten and those lips, right? So we're going to use the mixer brush to soften them because they're a little too crispy. So subtly come in and just oh so gently soften those ridges. That looks way better. See, just softens them oh so gently. We're gonna go ahead and flatten. And I think I still want her to be less skin toned. Let's see if we can do anything with more yellow gone. That looks kind of cool. Um, and let's just try reducing the reds a smidge. So whenever I do this, because I want to maintain the red in her lips and her cheeks, what I do, see that's before and after, is um, I'll just, I think actually that doesn't look too bad. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. But what I am going to do is a new blank layer, change my blend mode to color because this here is a little redder than that. So I'm probably going to grab more of a gray and this will allow me to 
just oh so subtly remove a bit of that red right there. I don't know if you can see the difference, but I can. And additionally, if I grab a redder color while I'm still on that color blend mode, if I want to add a little bit of red to this side of her face because it's less red, I can do that. And then to her lips, if you want to add more. Also a little bit of red up here. I usually do this. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm only on 10, so I might bump that up a bit for the lips. I actually don't like the lips, so I'm going to undo that. Yeah, it was better before. And if you look, you can see that her lips are kind of not really straight. So I'm just going to go into my liquify and just gently make those a little straighter. I think any of us are very symmetrical. I know one side of my mouth is totally off from the other side too. Okay, that's better, see? It's a bit better. Okay, so I think for all intents and purposes, this is pretty much done the only thing left to do really is some color toning so we'll come in here choose our blacks and because the blacks are already pretty cool I'm gonna stick with some cyan in the blacks maybe a touch of blue come to my neutrals because we took all the yellow out of her skin I really don't want to add any if we add a tiny bit of red I'm at minus two I don't want to add any yellow because I really wanted the yellow gone. I could reduce the lightness by two, which looks pretty good. Now the whites look magenta purple to me. Um, let's see if we turn them yellow. Sometimes yellow it looks cool. Looks like it added it to her skin. So yeah, the blue is the way to go. So I'm at minus five. I could reduce that a tiny bit. Okay, so that's before color toning. That's after color toning, which really pops her skin out and everything else. So we're gonna go ahead and reduce. And now my last step is just going to multiply my layer and come into Alien Skin Exposure 4. I don't have the latest version. Okay, so let's reset this layer because it defaults to the last one that I used. And now we're going to look for, I'm usually in Color Films Print um, because this one is pretty creative. Let's see what cinema has. You never know. Okay, I like this one. Technicolor Process 4 Faded. If you hit your space bar, you can see the before. It seems to have softened my shadows, which I don't want. So let's keep going. Ooh, this one looks really wild, doesn't it? That's actually kind of cool. Even though it undone, undoes all the stuff that I've done, I do like it. 
I think that really adds an interesting look to it. So let's keep it. Let's add a vignette. Um, now we just need to decide if we want it to be a reverse vignette, which is really cool for this image. It almost lends it a ghost-like feeling to it, doesn't it? And do this roundness. I think it can come in a bit right about there. That looks good. But I don't like all that grain, so let's come down and reduce the roughness of the grain, the strength. I think that looks pretty good. And I do want to sharpen it a little bit. Let's just zoom in to make sure that the sharpening isn't too crazy because sometimes it can sharp over sharpen. Turn the sharpening on and off and see what see what you think. That's before sharpening. I really like the sharpening in her eyes, not so much her skin. Hmm. So I think what I'll do is I'll do the sharpening in Photoshop. I'm just going to come up here and see if I can. So this is a second sharpening one. So I've pulled it up to about 37. Hold my option key down and then I can really see where this is affecting the sharpening regions, right? So that's added some realism to it. Let's zoom out. Okay. I like it. I think it really, really is cool. And sometimes I'm telling you that exposure has some of the coolest effects. So if you look at what we started with and what we ended with, I think it's pretty funky. You can reduce the opacity if you want to minimize it a bit. So maybe right about there is good. And now all we're going to do is sharpen. So duplicate your layer, go to linear light blend mode, filter other high pass. And now I click on her eye because that's where I really want to sharpen and it looks a little bit much. So I'm going to reduce it to about 2.4. Click OK. And now I'm holding down my alter option key, click mask. And now I can apply that only to the places I want it to be. So let's look at doing her eyebrow, eyelashes and her iris. I like the jewel. And you can reduce it if it's a bit much, which it is. There, that's better. Okay, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this. Let's take a look at the absolute out of the camera look. So that's the before and that's the after. See you in the next video.